A few weeks ago, my wife and I visited the Shaker Museum in Hancock, Massachusetts, where I saw this Shaker bench and decided to make a reproduction. I would consider this kind of a beginner to intermediate project, not much of a time or material commitment, and definitely a fun project that you probably have room for somewhere in your home. If you do want to build it, you can click on the link in the description below to pick up the plans. Let's go ahead and get to work. I'm building the bench with five quarter by eight boards and five quarter is just a little bit heavier than an inch thick. I'll rough cut the boards for the top and legs to length about an inch heavy and then I'll put a straight edge on one side of each board so I can join them together with the biscuit joiner. If you don't have a biscuit joiner, you can simply just glue the boards together. The main advantage of a biscuit joiner is to help align the boards during the glue up. When it comes to biscuit joiners, you probably don't need one in the shop, but it is a tool that I've used consistently over the years, and I'd probably rank it somewhere around, or at least in, the top 10 tools that I use most. I've let the glue set up overnight, and now I can take them out of the clamps and cut them to size. When I cut the boards to width, I'll take a little off each side, and that will remove any marks left by the clamps. Next, I'll use the crosscut sled to cut the top to its finished length of 44 inches. Then I'll cut the board that I glued together for the legs in half and then set up a stop block and cut the legs at 17 inches. Now that I have the seat and legs cut to size, the next step is the decorative cross braces and that's really what's going to add the strength to this bench. I'll rip the boards for the cross braces at 5 inches and then set up a stop block at the miter saw and cut them to length at 15. With all the parts cut to size, Next, I'll run them through the drum sander to make sure they're all the same thickness. After cutting the cross braces to length, I ran all the parts through the sander to get everything to the same exact thickness, and that's going to make it easier to get a nice tight lap joint. Next, I'll set up the cross cut sled and cut a lap joint in the braces and the legs. Next, I'll measure and mark to cut the lap joint in the center of the cross braces. I've raised the blade to 2 and 5 eighths of an inch above the sled and I'll set up a stop block for the first cut. I'll make this first cut in all the parts and a piece of scrap wood. With the first cut made in all of the parts, I'll sneak up on the second cut with the scrap piece and once I've got a good fit, I'll set the stop block, make the second cut in all of the parts and then plow out the center. When I cut the lap joint in the legs, I'll repeat the process again, making sure to get a good fit with the scrap piece. The next step is to use a piece of MDF and make a pattern for the decorative edge on each side of the cross brace. I'll cut the pattern out on the bandsaw 
and then I'll use my belt sander flipped upside down and clamped to my table to remove any of the blade marks and clean up the cut. After tracing the pattern onto the cross braces, I'll make this cut on the bandsaw and leave the line. I'm going to be able to clean this cut up using the pattern and a flush cut bit in the router. Now I can clamp the cross brace to the pattern and the ball bearing will follow the pattern giving me a nice clean cut. Because the router bit that I'm using is a little smaller than the material is thick, I'm going to need to make this cut in two passes. At the bottom of the bench leg I'm using a half moon shape. This is a pattern that I made a few years ago for another project and I created the half radius with a two gallon bucket. Again I'll cut the shape out on the bandsaw and then use the pattern and a flush cut bit in the router to get two parts that are exactly the same. When I slide the brace into the lap joint in the leg, you'll see that the leg extends beyond the brace by a quarter of an inch, and that's because the leg will be dadoed into the bottom of the seat. I'm using this jig and a straight bit in the router to cut the dado. The router will run along the half inch MDF fence, and the bit will cut along the quarter inch plywood edge. I've cut a piece of scrap wood at a quarter of an inch to test the height of the cut, and that looks pretty good, and I'll test it out on a piece of scrap wood. Now I'll cut this piece off about three quarters of an inch in and we can see how it looks. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now I'm measuring eight and a quarter from the edge at both sides and then use a square to draw a straight line across. Then I'll hold the leg at that line and trace a line on the other side. When I make that second pass, I'd rather be a little tight than a little loose. And in this case, I'm a little tight. And so what I can do is draw a line at the back of the fence, and I'll move the fence over to cover half of that line. I'll be attaching the brackets to the seat with inch and a half screws. So I'll measure in three quarters of an inch and find the center and pre drill and countersink holes for the screws. Now I'll find the center of the brace and then pre-drill and countersink a hole so I can reinforce the lap joint by screwing through the brace and into the leg. After using the drill press, I'll use a longer bit in my handheld drill to finish drilling the hole.
I'll attach the brace to the leg with a little wood glue and three and a half inch long screws. After applying wood glue to the dado and the top of the leg, I'll attach the assembled leg to the bench with inch and a half multi-material screws from PowerPro. These screws have a wafer head that acts like a washer and will prevent the screw from going any deeper into the countersink. With the bench assembled, I'll clamp the parts together and let the glue set up for a few hours. Next, I'll use a block plane to shape the bottom of the seat and add a slight round over to the front of the legs. The finish I'm using on this project is Total Boats Halcyon. This is a waterborne finish. I'll spray the bench with three coats, sanding lightly in between coats. Okay, well, I'm really happy with the way this turned out, and it was a fun project. And it's a really sturdy bench. I made this for my son Jack, who lives with two roommates, so the idea is it's going to get a lot of use. The wood that I used is Red Grandis, and I used Red Grandis because I had it here in the shop. If I were to build this again, I probably would use Cherry, but I originally intended to paint this, and I may still one day. I think what I'll end up doing is, uh, after Jack uses it for a couple years as a young man with roommates, and uh, one day, years from now, when he has a family, uh, maybe we'll paint it and it'll be more of a nicer piece somewhere in his home. But definitely a, a good sturdy bench and kind of one of those projects that's easy to find room for and very useful. If you're looking for other woodworking projects, I have a ton of plans on my site, so I hope that you'll check out my website. And I have free tutorials on YouTube that will help guide you through those projects. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Here's another project I'm really excited to tell you about. In this four-part detailed project accompanied with professional plans, I'll show you step-by-step step how to build this beautiful bookcase. This beginner project is designed to be an introduction to woodworking filled with all the information you'll need to make a project that will last a lifetime. Click on the link in the description below to learn more about this woodworking guide.